Good morning, one and all. That sounds so harsh. I know our own bells will sound much more beautiful than that. Thank you, Kim, for the lovely music. Welcome to one and all out there in Zoomland. We're happy to have you joining us this morning. And for the many of you in the pews, it's nice to see uh, an increase in numbers today. Way to go, everybody. Mission and Outreach has chosen the month of November to support addiction and mental health services here in our local area. And the, the message will appear in tidings next week, but today I want to remind you to perhaps look for the following items when you're out and about and bring some to put in the bin. Mitts, gloves, socks, gifts of warmth, deodorant, old cell phones, take out the SIM card, and there is a use for an old cell, cell phone. So if you have one that's in that drawer of junky electrical bits, this would be a good place to, uh, to put it. Uh, individual snacks, pudding cups, fruit cups, granola bars, that too would be welcome. So if you're out shopping and can, can make this gift happen, that would be a great thing. Uh, unfortunately, we are cancelling the Jazz Series concert for this Friday. I shouldn't say cancelling, we're postponing it. Um, we're going to wait till everybody's feeling a little bit better. The numbers can be great, um, but it has been po postponed. Sunday, November the 20th is New Members Sunday. So if you have come to a few services and you would like to join, this wonderful community of faith, transfer your membership, new membership, um, please speak to Michelle. Um, she'll be uh, more than willing to sign you up. We'd love to see you on a regular basis. Uh, one more, it, how many of you read tidings? Put your hand in the air if you read tidings. Okay, I, I read it. Maybe possibly you glance through it. Some of us could be guilty of that. For a number of weeks now, Elizabeth Amaral has put in a message asking for a volunteer or a couple of volunteers to make some phone calls, to make some connections. Our classics list is longer. We have more people in our congregation that are over 80. Maybe you're one of the young 80s, but you really like to talk on the phone. She's looking for people to connect with our classics. So if you could give up a few minutes of time in a week uh, just to make those connections happen, send an email off to Elizabeth and I know she'd be more than willing to, to talk to you and have it happen. Uh, the final one is maybe the best one. There's lunch today after church. Uh, after the funeral yesterday, Liz Jeffrey's funeral was yesterday afternoon, and there are some, some food items left, enough to, to share amongst us while we visit and uh, enjoy each other's fellowship. So please stay downstairs and enjoy that time together. Oh, I'm sorry, not downstairs. It's in the welcome center. Even better, we don't have to use the elevator or go downstairs. Are there any other announcements among us? This is the life and work of Edith Rankin Memorial United Church. On Sunday, we gather for worship. Let us worship God. The lighting of this candle symbolizes the beginning of our time of worship together. May our actions and commitment be a reflection of that light, the light of Christ, a symbol of stewardship and love. Friends, we gather here on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee people, the Huron and the Wendat tribes who have gathered from generation to generation to be good stewards of the land. 
of creation. As we gather, might we too feel the beauty of both creator and creation of which we are surrounded by and engaged with. Might we gather here as a community of faith, knowing that we are part of the greater circle of life. I welcome you to Stewardship Sunday, otherwise known as everyone's favorite Sunday. It is a blessing to be able to be a community. And so we welcome you here from Zoom and those who are gathering for the first time at Edith Rankin and for those who feel like this is a second home. As we come, might we lift our voices and our hearts together as we sing our opening hymn, Draw the Circle Wide. It's 145 in more voices or on your screens. For those of you on Zoom, you'll be proud to know we were doing the actions. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship that you will see on the screen. I invite you to be bold where it is bold, and I will say those words with you for the benefit of those who are on Zoom. We have been blessed by the eternal God who has been faithful to us. As thankful stewards, we will remain faithful to God. The mystery that has been hidden through the ages is Christ in you, the hope of glory. As loved and forgiven stewards, we will remain faithful to Christ. God has empowered us with the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and our guide, our unfailing source of strength. As spirit-filled stewards, we will remain faithful to the Holy Spirit. Will you pray with me? Holy One, as we gather here in the beauty of this sanctuary that we call home, here in the sanctuary and the beauty of your creation, with the sun shining and the water glistening, we gather as your stewards, as your stewards of hope and peace, joy and love, as your stewards of music and opportunity, as your stewards of grace and courage and story, and hope, and faith. 
Holy One, as we gather, we ask boldly for your blessing that we might be inspired in this time of worship to hear your good news alive within us and amongst us. As we gather, might we be united as one with a vision for the future that you have for us all. In this place, at this time, might your spirit descend and your breath arise within us and around us. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people can say, Amen. Well, I'm going to ask our young people to come on up, and we're a little bit low on one people, so if there's anyone feeling young at heart that wants to join us, come on up. Good morning, my sweet one. Can you come and sit next to me? Because I would like a new friend today. Would you be my friend today? Thank you. Can you tell everyone what your name is? Yeah, I know. Say it again. Mommy. <laughs> do you want to whisper to mommy what your name is? Yes. Her name is Bella. <gasps> Bella. What a beautiful name. And Bella, do you know the name of your grandma? Can you tell everyone what your grandma's name is? Nana. No, Nana. No. That's my mom. It's woo woo. Yeah. Say it's woo woo. It's woo woo. Woo woo. Woo woo. Woo woo. What a great name. Yeah. Do you know what we call woo woo? What do they call we you? call Woo Woo Janet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think I'll start calling her Woo Woo, actually. Yeah. I like that better than Janet. Yeah. yeah and now that we're friends, do you think that would be all right? Yeah. yeah, thank you. So we're learning a whole bunch of new words here at church today. For the last couple of weeks, we've been learning words, and today we have a new one. A couple of weeks ago, we learned mission. Can I hear you say mission? Mommy, can mommy say it? Mission. And last week we heard service. Can you say service? <laughs> mommy, can you say it? Service. And yeah. today we're learning a new word called steward. Yeah. yeah. What do you think steward is? Do you remember you said that when we were sitting, what you thought steward meant? What do you think it means? Do you know what that means? I don't, I don't know what you think it means. <laughs> she thought yeah. it meant stew. Stew? She says, <gasps> she said, Nana loves stew. Whoa, and I me. love stew too. Do you think Woo Woo likes stew? Yeah. yeah. Do you, it's kind of like that. You know how we make stew is we put all the good things into one pot. We put in potatoes. What else do we put in stew? Do you like carrots in your stew? Yeah. yeah. Do you like peas in your stew? <gasps> we had peas yesterday, didn't we? Yum. Yeah. What else do you like in your stew? Carrots. Carrots. Yes, Excellent. Well, <laughs> stewards are kind of like stew because today we're talking about putting all the good things into the same pot. We call that pot the operating budget, but it's much better to think of it as stew. We're putting all the good things into one pot as good stew words. Can I hear you say stew words? <laughs> Mommy's so busy today. You want to say it together? <gasps> yeah, together. Say it together. Ready? Stewards. Awesome. It's been so great having you here, and thank you for bringing Woo Woo to church today. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Mummy too. And you're going to have a chance to go downstairs with Ruth, and you're going to get to sing and play and learn more about stew. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, the bells, of course. We want to hear Woo Woo play the bells. Bless you, sweet child. We'll see you again another day, okay? Say goodbye. Okay. Bye. Hit it, Woo Woo. <laughs> I should, I should explain woo-woo. Uh, with all my clever grandchildren and being musical, I want them to match pitch like when they're one years old. So I start with the most famous interval, woo-woo. So, <laughs> so the, the loo became woo-woo, just so you know. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The Fellowship of the Believers. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Thanks, Eric. The passage that Eric has just read comes from Acts, which is commonly believed to be written by St. Luke, Luke the Evangelist, as it follows immediately after Luke's Gospel. Not in succession of books, but in content. I can hear you all saying in your heads, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, how far can we keep going? <laughs> Second Corinthians, come on. <laughs> the content is conti continuous. Luke's gospel concludes where Acts begins. And it is with Christ's ascension into heaven. And so why on this passage on Stewardship Sunday. It might be to remind you that you can't take it to heaven, so you might as well give it to the church. <laughs> or it might be to remind you that God loves a cheerful giver. Or it might be a good excuse for the chancel choir to sing heavenly sunshine i think actually while both of those are true i think that this passage of acts was written to remind us today that not only in verse 45 where it says they sell their possessions and distribute their goods to all who had need appropriate for stewardship but also to teach us about verse 46 that says, day by day, as they spent time together, as they broke bread together, as they ate together, they had glad and generous hearts. So don't forget today on Stewardship Sunday, we're going to eat together. We're going to break bread together. We're going to sing and dance in the temple together. And we too, I pray, will have glad and generous hearts. When I woke up to the frost the last few mornings, I thought, oh God, I'm going to have to start wearing socks. <laughs> I love the season, but socks? But it reminded me of those beautiful days of summer and that poem by Mary Oliver, one of my favorite poets called The Summer Day. And the concluding line in Mary Oliver's summer poem is, what is it that you have planned to do with your one wild and precious life? So on this Stewardship Sunday, with this Acts passage, to sell your possessions and distribute your wealth to those in need, I thought that maybe we should explore together what it is that you have planned for your one wild and precious life what is it today in this moment in this place that you have planned to do with your one wild and precious life Mary Oliver, I believe, is asking us the ultimate question of stewardship. How are you going to offer the gift of you, perfectly made? How are you going to offer yourself in love to the world? How are you going to share in the stewardship of love and joy? How are you going to share in the stewardship of pain and suffering? 
How are you, how are we going to be good stewards of all that God offers to us, the love and the joy and yes, the pain and the suffering too? How will we be good stewards to one another so that the pain and suffering never becomes the last word or the ultimate word? How are we going to be good stewards so that we create here a safe place to steward and share all that is in our one wild and precious life? How might you find courage to be a steward who shares her story? How might you find bravery to be a steward who listens in trust? How might you be a steward of grace, a steward of hope, a steward of advocacy, a steward of love, I love stew. How might we all be stew words where we collect all that we are into the pot of graciousness and hope, compassion, kindness, and love? Mary Oliver says in a different poem, when it is over and when I die, she says, I do not want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I do not want to simply have ended up visiting my life, but instead partaking of every breath. We are being invited to be the poets of our own poems, the stewards of our own stewardship, the livers of our own lives, the disciples of our own discipline, the givers of our own generosity, the stewards of our own stew. Not merely visitors, upon our lives, but active participants in them. For if we do not live our one wild and precious life to the very most, who will live it for us? We are invited not merely to be attendees at church here in this place because we heard there were leftovers for lunch, but instead to be church alive in the world, Monday through Sunday. On this Stewardship Sunday, we are invited to hear the call and respond generously and actively to live and to give of our wild and precious lives. If we step out of the scriptures and out of the beauty of poetry and into the reality of our financial statements, we can see that last year, we as one community of faith received over $100,000 in government and church COVID assist grants. We give our gratitude to be the recipients of those dollars and that grant money. But this year, those grants aren't available. So we have to make a bigger pot of stew. We have to make up the difference. We, that same donor pool that yes, is getting older, yes, is getting smaller, we have to build a bigger pot. We're going to have to do a lot of work to pass a balanced budget at our congregational meeting on November the 27th, which is, yes, just a few short weeks away. 
But let's go back to the poetry and the scripture because that's easier than the financial statements. It's Stewardship Sunday, also known as everyone's favorite Sunday, when we are being asked to live our best lives, our wild and precious lives, to share our blessings with the mission and the ministry of this place. I am so grateful to all of you who have faithfully shared throughout COVID your weekly donations, your givings of your hands and your heart, and for those of you on par that have helped us through the lean times. I am also wondering how many of the about 100 par givers that we have, how many of you have changed your par givings. I don't know if your mind is like my mind, but sometimes time goes faster than we had imagined and months slip by or sometimes it's years that slip by before we ever think to change our givings. And so today on this favorite Sunday of the year, I'm going to ask you who are faithfully giving on par to discern when is the last time you increased your par givings. All we need is for those hundred people to give $1,000 more a year or 10 people to give $10,000 more a year. I'm flexible and easy, whichever you choose. <laughs> Friends, we are blessed. We have joy in our hearts. We have awoken to beauty and to breakfast out of warm beds under safe roofs. We are blessed. We are living fully our wild, precious, and blessed lives. We are living fully the love that we have been given. And yet we are still called to make a difference, to have an impact, to make a choice to give and to give and to give all that we have been given. To choose life, to choose life, to choose relationship, to choose hope. Scripture offers to us an invitation to be in relationship with God. In that relationship, we think of God maybe as the unknowable or the mystery or the unnameable or the holy, but also God is known to us, felt by us, identified with us, breath within us, both creator and created. And so we are invited to fall in love again with the one who first fell in love with us. And we are called to be stewards of love, to steal away time to be with the one who calls us love. As we gather, might we be able to count our blessings as if they were magic pennies or peas in the stew where we take our collective into one pot so that we might share in the mission and the ministry of this place may it be so and for that all god's people can say Amen. We are being invited to choose to spend our one wild and precious life with the shepherd who calls us love. Are you a shepherd? Let's sing it together. It's on More Voices 126 or on your screen. It might be new for some of you, but it is a blessing.
I want to enter into a time of prayer with you. And I want, as we prepare to be blessed by the Spirit, I want you to think of your first conscious moment this morning. <laughs> that wasn't funny. <laughs> I want you to think of your first conscious moment this morning. Were you warm in bed? Or did you look out and see the frost and shiver? Did you smell the coffee knowing that someone who loved you was already up and had the coffee ready? Was it little kisses on your cheek from someone who snuggles with you? Four-legged or otherwise? <laughs> what was your first conscious thought this morning? Was it, I'm hungry because I've not had enough to eat for days now? Was it, I'm cold because there was no room in the shelter last night? Was it, my heart is broken because we buried my loved one yesterday? Was it, I'm tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired? I want you to think of your first moments of this day. And then I want you to think of the Acts passage that Eric read for us that says they gathered together, they broke bread together, they shared amongst themselves all that they had so that everyone had enough and they had joy in their hearts. Will you pray with me? Holy One who offers us breath, we receive it with gratitude and we breathe together. Holy One who offers us vision, we receive your vision and we hold it together. Holy One who offers us grace, we receive your grace and we share it with others. Holy One who offers us bounty, we receive it with gratitude and we offer back our portion so that in your collective pot of compassion and kindness mission and ministry we might all place our offerings we lift up to you those who are hungry and we pray that this day they will find bread to break at a table where hearts are filled with joy. We lift up those who are cold, underhoused or homeless. And we pray that this day they might be blanketed with new opportunity, new warmth and new love. We lift up those who are grieving and we ask for your spirit to embrace them in places that we cannot. Hold them close so that they might know they are never alone. Holy, holy, Holy God, 
on this day of stewardship, might you place within our hearts your deep call for us to be the best stewards that we can be. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples then and now to pray together with one voice saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight. Let's be blessed by our chancel choir.
My mom's favorite conductor is Andre Ryu, and in his concerts, there's always people dancing in the aisle. That was your chance, people. That was a great dance number. I know we've got some dancers out there. Um, in case you haven't heard it yet, it's Stewardship Sunday. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Sunday of the year. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to our limestone ringers and Janet McDonald for the gift that they share as stewards of lifting up our hearts and our spirits with the bells. On not tomorrow, but the next day is Terry Head's birthday, November the 1st, All Saints Day, and that's the first time I was introduced to the limestone ringers when you came to London for the Igor Festival, not Igor, I don't have that quite right. Ogre, the Ogre Festival, equally a bad word. <laughs> Ontario English Handbell Ringers Association or something like that. We share our gratitude with you for being great, great stewards. We share our gratitude with Kim Barney and the Chancel Choir for being great, great stewards of music who lift our hearts and our spirits with the gifts that you offer to us week after week after week. We give our gratitude to you for being stewards who share your hands, your hearts, your gifts, and your resources for all that you share in this mission and this ministry. We are so grateful. So as we share in our offerings, you will be reminded we're doing it in a new way during COVID where you can are invited to place your offerings in the plate before worship. If you have forgotten or you're new, please feel free to deposit it after worship. Uh, but we will bless our offerings trusting that the good news of the gospel is when we share our hearts, they are blessed and returned tenfold for mission and ministry here in this place and around the world. So I invite you to stand as you're able or comfortable and we will sing together, praise God from whom all blessings flow while we receive the offering. God, we ask for your blessing upon these gifts and upon all those who have given, that these resources might be used here and in every corner of your world so that everyone everywhere might be a steward who receives love, grace, compassion, and hope. May it be so. And all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together our final hymn, Go Make a Difference. It's on page 209 or on your monitor.
Friends, as we go from this place, remember to come back. Come back to a place that is filled with the stewards of graciousness and kindness and hospitality and hope, authenticity and trust, listening and healing. Come back to a place that is filled with courage and opportunity and grace and goodness, for surely that is you. When we gather here next week, we will be honoring our veterans. And so I remind you and invite you to place a poppy upon your heart and come back to worship where we shall stand as one nation. As we go from this place, be ready to be the very best steward that you can be. Go in peace, my friends, and all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. Thank you.